In this video, you will learn how to set up Pixie or pre-boot execution environment. We will be using netboot.xyz for this tutorial. You can boot your computer from the network using Pixie boot without need of any USB flash disk or without need of DVD or anything. We'll be installing Netboot XYZ on Docker and then we'll set up our PFSense for DHCP and Netboot. And then we'll be booting from network using netboot.xyz on our virtual machine. Here is the Docker which is already available on my Proxmox. So if you want to know how we can install Proxmox, if you want to know how we can set up the Docker on Proxmox, I have provided the link in the description. Step by step guide is also available where you can learn how you can get started with Docker. From my previous videos, I have created Docker inside Docker. I created the folder with my name and inside that i'm creating all the stacks so these are my existing stacks i'll be creating one more folder here which will be netboot.xyz if i show you netboot.xyz the favorite operating system in one place with the help of netboot.xyz it is extremely simple to use you can evaluate the operating system and then install it and even you can use most popular kind of recovery tools of course netboot.xyz doesn't mean that you can install it only for the network boot you can download the iso image to burn the cd or dvd as a bootable device or you can of course use this bootloader as usb and then you can start netboot from there i have made a blog where i have explained you step by step how you can get started with netboot.xyz on docker and then configure on pfsense this is what we are gonna do here and i have provided all the details here so my first step is that i'll be creating a folder in root folder i created the folder and here i'll be creating a folder mkdir and i'll give it a name netboot.xyz this is the folder where i'll be of course creating docker component pose file so first of all cd space netboot.xyz and inside this folder i'll create two more folders one will be required for the configuration and another will be required for the assets so i'll do mkdir assets and another one i'll be creating mkdir config enter now you can see here these are two folders which are created inside netboot.xyz stack which i created so i want the configuration to be stored in these two folders and now to create the docker container using docker compose i'll be creating a file with a nano editor so i'll be doing sudo nano docker dash compose dot yaml and inside this file i'll be copying the script that i have already created this is the docker compose of course you might see it from the uh, netboot.xyz website also but i have customized it to make sure that it works for you so i'll simply copy all of this and i'll paste it over here now if i explain you the content of this of course it will first of all create the service which will be netboot.xyz and it will load the image from lscr.io and this will be linux server netboot xyz latest image will be downloaded and the container name will be created which will be netboot xyz environment variable the user id and group id which will be fine the menu version in case you uncommit this so what will happen that it will get the menu version 1.9.9 .9. So I always want to get the latest version of the menus because it will have all the latest type of the images and live series. So I'll be just disabling this so that it will get the latest image. Now this is, this is the port range. Uh, it is optional. You can keep it or you can remove it. It is fine. And here down you can see here that I'm now saving the configuration into the config folder and here assets into the assets folder. And these are the default ports. Of course, you don't need to change it default port for the web ui is 3000 and port 69 is for the tftp server and port 8080 is for the web server where the assets will be loaded from so assets which will be locally stored will be loading from this particular server which has port 8080 and then here the last line which shows that restart unless stop my docker compose file is ready so i'll do Control x and save yes enter all right so docker compose file is now ready so i need to now start this container and in order to start the container one well-known command which i'll be using will be docker compose space up dash t it will pull the image of the container and then it will start the container so i'll just press enter you can see here it has started pulling the netboot xyz it has created the network, created the container, and now it started the container. 
Now, if I show you here, IP address is 192.168.240.6 and it is running on port 3000. So I'll be doing 192.168.240.6 and port is 3000. Now you can see menu version is 2.0.76, which is the latest. Current web app version is 0 0.70. It is running the TFTP service. It is running the web server, which is Nginx, this one, which we are looking at. And if I see the local assets, these are all the bootable assets boot repair clonezilla debian fedora and all of these are available these are hosted on cloud so you won't need to download any of the images it will directly get the image from the cloud and you can directly load the live cd from the cloud but if you have internet bandwidth issue so you can download it and it will become local assets and then you need to make some changes into the configuration that i'll show you but don't confuse yourself this is extremely simple now as i'm using pfsense here is my pfSense and it is working as a DHCP server also. And if I click here on services, DHCP server, you can see here my DHCP server is running right now. And if I see the status of DHCP server, also DHCP leases. So all these leases are already provided. I'll be going back here to DHCP server. Now you can see here a few configurations that I need to do. I need to enable the net boot here in the pfSense. I have provided the details here in the blog, which I have written here. So your TFTP server should be the IP address of your Docker container. So my Docker container IP address is 192.168.240.6 on the web UI of netboot.xyz. The home of this you will see here TFTP server is also running. So it means that I can simply go here into pfSense. So this will be a TFTP server which is 192.168.240.6. I'll just copy this to make sure that I'm able to paste it. One thing that you need to change is the TFTP server here. Another option is network booting. So you will just display the advanced setting here, enable network booting and just paste the IP address here, which is 192.168.240.6. Next server is setup, which is of course the Docker container where the TFTP server is also hosted and the next server for the network booting is also configured. Now I need to choose the default BIOS file. So default BIOS file, I have mentioned it here. The name is mentioned here. Of course, on netboot.xyz also it is mentioned netboot.xyz.kpxe legacy dhcp boot image file if you have the old nic drivers so you will be using this particular image so these are all different options here so i have mentioned it here also on my blog so you can see here netboot.xyz.kpxe will be using this as default so if the architecture is not known so by default this one will be loaded and then i can show you from here also that if it is the 64-bit architecture or 32-bit architecture so you will be using netboot.xyz.efi so i mentioned it here also for other options you will be using netboot.xyz.efi so i'll copy this here and paste it for the 32-bit architecture and for 64-bit architecture also if you are using for the arm 32-bit processor or six arm 64-bit so what you will be copying here arm 64-bit so i'll copy this and paste it over here for arm 64-bit and for arm 32-bit in case you have any arm processor so you'll be using for 32-bit here so that's it you will just simply save it now and once you save it you will apply the changes and we are done now the machine is configured now dhcp server is configured here and once the dhcp server is configured for the net boot and our net boot server is also ready we'll be going here to our proxmox server and we'll be creating one test vm here i'll do create vm and here i'll be using it for net boot dash tutorial click next operating system will not be loading from the cd of course it will load from the network and here system i'll be keeping default will not be using any disk also but i'll be uh, just for the sake of this tutorial i'll be using for example 4 gb at disk cpu i'll be using default depending upon what image you are going to load what live cd you are going to load you can of course choose the cores i'll be choosing two core cpu here memory this is extremely important some of the images which are large images like kali and ubuntu they will need larger space in your memory so that they can load all the image into a ram and then it will start loading so ideally you should go for the highest ram for example i'll be going for 6122 network i'll be choosing vmbr1 because this is where my dhcp server will be running next and finish
if I go back here to this machine which I just created, I'll be removing the CD from here. I don't need the CD into this. And if I go here to BIOS, default BIOS is this, otherwise, you can use the OVMF or UEFI. So I'll not be choosing that, I'll be using it default. What I'm gonna do here is that I'm going to change the boot order here. So in options, boot order, make sure that network boot is selected and it is at top. So I'll be using this at top to ensure that it directly loads and done. Now our VM is ready to boot, reboot environment from the network. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to just click on console and start the VM. It will get the IP address from the server and here you can see netboot.xyz. It has started loading the file. You can see here next server is 192.168.240.6 and here the file name is netboot.xyz.kpxc has loaded now. Now from here we can of course install any utility or you can test any distribution, you can test any live CD or even you can use the installer. If I press enter here, you will see all different type of Linux distributions which are available to install. For example, in case you want to install BIOS or Proxmox or Oracle Linux or even Fedora, Kali, CentOS or even Ubuntu and all of that. Press Ctrl C so it will take you back to the main menu. From here, you can also test the live CDs and these are all the live CDs which are available. Control C, you'll go back here to see the utilities. Here you can see all these utilities. Casper Sky Rescue Disk, you can use System Rescue Disk. There are various other tools, Clonezilla and all of that can be used here. In case you want to use iPixie Shell, you can use that. Here if you enter, you'll see the network information or network card information, the MAC address of the network card, the IP address, gateway, and the domain where it is connected to DNS server and DHCP server, next server, and the file name which is being loaded here. In case you want to load the Microsoft Windows installer, PCI device list. So if you want to see all the device lists which are available on your computer, so you can see that as well. Go back by pressing Control C and here Linux network installs. For example, if I press this, YOS or VMware or Ubuntu or Proxmox. So you can directly install using these images. And here if I press enter here and see here the source right now is github.com slash netboot xyz. If you go back here to the menus and you can see here these are all the files which are available. Don't get confused. Only boot.cfg is the file that we have to check here. And in boot.cfg you can see set live endpoint. And here is the live endpoint, which is github.com slash netboot.xyz. So instead of github.com, if you remember, we have our own server here. This one is the server. Copy this and I'll show you colon 8080. This is where all the files are available. And assets, these are all the assets which are available. And right now, I do not have any assets on my local system. So let me choose any of the assets. So I'll be going for maybe YOS rolling release. So this is the YOS rolling release. SquashFS, initRD and VMLinus. So I'll be just pulling these selected images. And here is elementary OS. So I'll be getting these three files of elementary OS and I'll be pulling the selected. Now if I want to run local assets, of course, I'll go back here to menu and boot CFG, set live endpoint which is of course this one and if i open this here it will open the github all these images are available here otherwise if i go back to 192.168.240.6 and here port for this server where the files are stored this is the local assets so i'll copy the address of local assets from here and i'll paste it into configuration file and instead of github i'll be just pasting it over here it will get all the files from here now so I'll save the configuration. Now you can see here that the custom configuration for the boot.cfg is created. So I'll go back here to the Proxmox and I'll start this netboot test. And here I'll start and go to console here. Now it will immediately load from the network. These are the live CDs. So I'll be running the elementary OS and elementary OS 7, which we downloaded. And you can see here it is getting this from the local assets
all right english select select all right so elementary os from the netboot on netboot test and netboot xyz it's on docker right now on pfsense network boot and on proxmox i'm using this as a vm the vm is running as a live boot so here i'll just open the browser shut down and restart and let us try some other operating system now we'll try to run yos we'll go to linux network install yos all right so here yos is running from the live cd on the network boot so i'll be doing yos user id yos password we'll do configure and here clear and you can see configuration show configuration and it's done i'll just exit the configuration reboot the server and that's it so this is how you can run the netboot xyz pixie boot on the local network so using docker and pfsense so hope you like this video see you next video take care and goodbye